Okay. Jerusalem has been destroyed because of sin. Seventy years captivity is over with. Daniel. Done. Ezra is headed back to the homeland. Building the temple. Nehemiah is coming with the people. Great revival. Temple's foundation is laid. All of the sin is forgotten. Haggai chapter 1. Haggai, Haggai is, is taking place with the circumstances detailed in Ezra and Nehemiah. In the second year of Darius, that's the Persian king, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, this is dated, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, that's the civil leader in Jerusalem, the son of Shethaniah, the governor under Babylon of Judah. There's no more king. The kings are gone. Governor of Judah. And Joshua, this is the religious leader, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, the high priest has been sent back up. There's not a king, but there's a governor, and he's under Babylon, well, not Babylon, he's under the Persian authority. Like the Jews were in Jesus' time, they're under the Roman authority. They could not put Jesus to death without the Romans approval. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Now, the sin has been judged, the captivity has happened, they're back in the land. The people say, Excuse, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Did you read Ezra? They started building. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, it is, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? How come you got houses? How come you got sealed houses? How come your houses are finished? Is it time for you to build your house? And this house be lied waste? The temple. How come, and this one I preach on the streets this morning, how come it's me first and not God? Why have you got your living, but you haven't got the temple of the house finished yet? And your excuse is, well, it's not time to do the Lord's house. But it's time to build your house, right? The people gave an excuse and God told them what their excuse was. And God did not credit the excuse. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Matthew 6, 33, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What are you doing? Who's getting the service? You or God? Ye have sown much. You put a lot of seed out. You put a lot of bulbs out. And bring in little. That's really a violation of nature. When you plant a seed in the ground, I would say what? Three out of five seeds will actually grow, and maybe two out of three will actually become a fruit bearing plant. You plant a little corn in the ground, you get a lot of corn. You plant tomato seeds, you get a lot of tomatoes. That's nature. Nature is what you sow of that you shall also reap with an increase. 
But when you think of yourself and rather God, you defy nature. Did you realize that? You have broken the laws of nature by not thinking of God first. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. You're left being hungry. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. You're still thirsty. You still got hunger. Ye clothe you. Ye clothe you. Not God. Ye clothe you. There's a good one. Wait, the ye's and the thou. Well, ye clothe you. But there is no warm. You got clothes on, you're still freezing. And he that earneth wages gets a job. Earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. You start walking away with your wages and they're falling out of the bag. You know why America's crying because the wages are not enough? You put yourself before God. And now you're trying to get rid of God. You think $15 minimum wage is going to help? When your burger will cost you $20 and not more? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways, verily, verily. He said it twice. What's God want you to do? Consider your ways. When something's not working out, and you have become the God in your life, God wants you to consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, the house. And I will take pleasure in it. This will be the house that Jesus Christ will walk in the modifications with the Roman government I will be glorified saith the Lord according to Haggai the, the temple wasn't finished but everybody's houses were being finished he looked for much and lo it came to little And when you brought it home, your house, I, God, did blow upon it. <laughs> Why? Saith the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is waste. Remember the Babylonians burned it, destroyed it? All right, the foundation has been laid, but look at it. It's a pile of rubble. Look at your house. And ye run every man unto his own house. You take care of your house more than you took care of my house. That's after being judged for their sin. That's after destroying Jerusalem. That's after being 70 years in the captivity. That is after the great revival of Ezra and Nehemiah. And they still haven't gotten right. I guess a revival is not really the answer. We've had some great revivals in America, yes. But look at the condition we are in. I know the church is not God. The church buildings are not the church. But they are forsaken, aren't they? Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. God says, because you haven't taken care of my house, I control the weather. Plant all you want to plant, verse 6, it ain't going to do nothing. 
that guy today. Oh, you know, Jerusalem looks wonderful and all that today. Really? It does? Compared to what it was like in the days of Solomon? You know why that land looks like it does over there today? Because they haven't thought of God, but they're thinking of themselves. And anything that is being planted and, and over is artificial watering. It's not natural. And I call for a drought upon the land. The Jews are thinking of themselves. They are not thinking of God. And God says, I'm going to cause a drought. What's America trying to do with God today? Guess what's coming to America? During the Depression, there was still God. He was still in the prayers. He was still in the thoughts. And there was food. Not much, but there was food. And people were satisfied. The next depression, you'll have all the money you want, but you won't have the food. Go ahead, try to eat coins. Try to make a salad out of a dollar bill. And upon the mountains, that would be your spring waters, your springs. And upon the mountains and upon the corn, wheat, bread, barley. Upon the new wine, grapes. Upon the oil, olives. Upon that which the ground bringeth forth, everything else. Upon man. Upon cattle, milk, beef. Sacrifices. Upon all the labor of the hands. Everything you do. Everything you have. Everything the land produces. Will come to a stop. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shelatiel, and Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, Nehemiah, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. So you see a street preacher that did come into the land and started preaching did do good. It woke the high priest up. Oh man, yeah, I didn't think about that. Preaching makes you think. Oh, well, wait a minute. Preaching makes you think about the less obvious in your life because you're too busy trying to make a living, trying to pay your bills, trying to put food on your table. And you don't have time to think about God. That's what the world will do to you. And you need to sit under a preacher and under a Bible teacher to say, Hey, God, remember him? A boy, uh, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet. Look at that. They obeyed the prophet. At least one thing to 70 years of captivity done, when a prophet speaks, you better listen. How's that? I'll give them that much credit. As the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Give them that credit. They did learn something from persecution. They did learn something from captivity. When God sends a preacher, when God sends a prophet, you better listen. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people. The Lord's message, not Haggai's. I am with you, saith the Lord. How's that? You repented. You got right. And God says, okay, I'm with you now. Now, for God to say, I'm with you, does that sound like he left you? John tells us in the second epistle that he that has not the doctrine of Christ has not God. Don't tell me God loves, God hates the sin and loveth the sinner. Not according to Haggai 1. 
Not according to Second John nine and eight, uh, eight and nine. They have sinned against God, and God has brought judgment, and they got right, and they repented, and they said, "Yeah, we're going to do what God said." And God says, "I am with you." Don't you dare say God is with you in your your sin. Don't you dare say God loves you and you're living in your sin. Now listen, you can sin and be sorry you sin and repent of your sin and put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and battle your sin. Okay? But if you just outright love your sin, enjoy your sin, make excuses for your sin, God is not with you. There are some sins that God leaves in us like he does with a flea to a dog. One little flea will remind that dog he's a dog. One sin in your life will remind you, you know what? You're not perfect. You're a sinner. Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh. He prayed to God three times. God says, no, shut up. I'm giving you that thorn to remind you, Paul, of who you are. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel. That guy's going to probably have 15 different names before we finish. Of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah. And the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jezdek. That guy's going to have a different name. The high priest. Notice it's Judah. Israel never goes back to, goes back to the land. Judah goes back. The high priest and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did the work of the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. In the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. So we begin with verse one, second year of Darius in the sixth month on the first day. On the first day of the sixth month, 24 days, 23 days later, you know they got their butt hustling? 23 days later, they finished the job. Yeah, because it says the sixth month of the first day of the month, the four and twentieth day of the sixth month. 23 days they hustled their butt and got it. Now, that's not a zeal for God. Now, I don't know how long the work would have lasted. But you remember Elijah and Ahab? How quick Elijah flew past Ahab? When you get a zeal for the Lord to do right, Time has no time. Jonah going three days. Jonah going in three days. Day. Doing it one day. Can you imagine what, 23 days later, can you imagine what these people, wow, that went by quick. How many months were we doing this? Uh, it hasn't even been a full month. It's 27 days. Wow. Wow. See that? I'll give the Jews credit here. They are finally listening to their preacher. And now, the temple that had been destroyed is now rebuilt. And there are people who are cheering in Ezra. And there are people in Ezra, they are crying. To those who have never seen the temple, wow, look at it, there it is. We did it in 27 days. Wow, great. And the ones that remember the temple, it, it's not the same. It's not the beauty that Solomon built. But do you know what about this temple? Now we as a family, we finished Second Kings tonight. This temple does not have the Baal worship, 
This does not have the false altars. This does not have the stargazers. This one does not have the magicians. This one doesn't have the false priests. This one is for God. Even with Solomon, now remember, now remember, let's go back now. Let's look at what we're doing here in Haggai. They spent more time, I don't know where to find it. Sorry, I don't. They spent more time on their house than they did the temple, right? You know it's recorded that Solomon spent more time on his house than he did the Lord's house. I wouldn't even know where to find that. I am sorry. Um, Second Samuel, probably. Let's check here. Maybe it could be in First Kings, maybe. Probably First Kings. Yeah, Death of David. So let's look here. It's First Kings. Uh. First Kings, I'm at four, five, all right, five, six, all right, seven, chapter six, verse 38. Solomon had the same problem. First Kings, six, 38. I don't know if I said second king. First Kings, six, 38. In the eleventh year in the month bull, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Which it, by the way, this can be dated too. Which is the eighth month on the first, on the, wait, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof and according to all the fashion. So was he seven years in building it. It took him 27 days, but we don't know how much was, was it built. All right, it's chapter seven, verse one. But Solomon was building his own house 13 years. The difference is six years and six months. Nope, six years. I gotta learn how to write there. Six years. He spent six more years with his house than he did with the, with the Lord's house. That temple was not really on the Jews' mind, was it? They're not in the mind of building that temple today, are they? Everybody says, oh, when that temple gets reared up. They're not in a rush, are they? And according to what the Bible says, they may start the foundation. Hey, the rapture's coming. Look at the foundation. Look at the foundation. Look, look, look. And then Haggai had to come and say, are you guys going to finish? You gonna finish? 